how can sustainable banking support to save the planet? That's not an easy task. I, I try to run uh, through it. I have to admit, I'm a banker for 25 years. I have seen that reputation has come down dramatically over the past years. I try to show you that uh, sustainable banking makes a hell of a lot of sense and uh, that a few institutes in the banking industry have started to follow that route. So, agenda very, very shortly, I will go through sustainable investments in bonds and equities. Uh, you already had contact with MAMA, they are covering the area of sustainable private equity. Uh, then uh, sustainable credit, which has impact as well. Uh, and uh, finally, it's not good only to analyze uh, third parties regarding their uh, degree of sustainability. Uh, banks also have to look inside uh, their own organization, so this will be then uh, the last part. Um, you know all this stuff coming from forestry and then uh, the UN. The UN did something very good, uh, which was this uh, introduction of the principles of responsible investment, which is a mega force now and is driving the capital markets and it has just started. The definition you have seen a number of times, uh, it's our conviction that sustainability has always been also sustainable in the economic sense. If it does not fly uh, on its own, you can forget it. The major demand uh, in the future for sustainable investments, it's still with the institutional investors, uh, the principles of responsible investments I, I just mentioned. Uh, thirdly, it's the public, the media pressure and, and the NGO work, and it's now swapping into the retail field as well. So that's the last wave that uh, will discover sustainable investments. These are the, the, the principles here. Uh, once again, one of the, I think one of the best things uh, United Nations ever did here. Uh, and if you look at these figures here, it's rapidly growing. Uh, by Monday afternoon, they had 880 subscribers to these uh, principles. And uh, by the way, in Germany, we are 13, 1-3. Uh, so uh, Switzerland is uh, 42, Netherlands 47, United States 128 companies who committed to these principles. What is even more interesting these investors all together, these 800 plus investors, represent a capital stock of approximately 40 trillion euro. So these are 40,000 billion euro. These are huge pension funds, uh, these are big companies, and if only, let's say, 10% uh, of this amount is really invested in, in the equity markets in the future. This is a very strong force which will put pressure on all the companies who are on the capital market. The market size here, uh, I think it's overstated. Uh, the, the core investments are around one trillion. If you compare this with the uh, market cap of the Eurostoxx 50, the biggest 50, publicly listed companies in Europe, this is 1.4 trillion. So two-thirds of this amount, uh, an equivalent of two-thirds, is in uh, sustainable investments or social responsible investments. If you look at the position within Europe, uh, you see that uh, the Netherlands are uh, well positioned here. They have already 25% of the market capitalization of the Netherlands uh, stock market in sustainable investments, and they have a nice uh, growth rate. This is due to the fact that uh, a number of big pension funds in the Netherlands 
uh, has committed themselves to these principles of responsible investments. Otherwise, uh, than, than in Germany, the pensions are separate in separate pension funds, whereby in Germany it's mostly in the balance sheet of the company. But you see here, or you, you hardly can see, Germany, so it's still very small. So we are at the very, very beginning in Germany uh, with this trend of sustainability investments. There are uh, in, in Germany, we are here in a, in, a, in a billion area. This is 09, it has grown a little bit, but it's still very small. Uh, what I would like to show you here, there are uh, basically uh, two different styles. The one is normal, uh, normal financial analysis of these companies, and then you have uh, some exclusions defined that you don't have companies with, with drugs or alcohol or tobacco or military uh, equipment uh, and you exclude it. Or uh, you have a bit more sophisticated approach called best in class. So you take all the different sectors that you have uh, and then you uh, look at the most sustainable companies within the sector and uh, put these companies to your universe. Our approach is a little bit more sophisticated. By the way, it, the idea to start this came in 1986 under the influence of Chernobyl and the uh, Sandos uh, catastrophe in, in the River Rhine. And uh, the head of our sustainable investment department, Andreas Knörzer, was jogging with uh, Stefan Schaltegger, who is now running Leuphania University. So that was the beginning of sustainability uh, uh, in uh, Switzerland. We combine it with the normal analysis, risk return, security, and liquidity of investments. And after having done this financial analysis, we add this environmental filter and the uh, social filter. So, how does it look like? Um, uh, Sarazin Bank has a sustainability matrix, which means at the beginning, we have best of classes. So, we look at different sectors. Uh, for example, the automobile industry is less sustainable. Uh, renewable energy is very, very much uh, sustainable. And in the more sustainable sector, we have more different stocks. Uh, in the less sustainable sector, you have to have a very high sustainable company to get into our investment universe. We have... Uh, over 180 different criteria and our 50 analysts based on Basel are pain in the neck to all these companies. They do secondary research and also primary research and they run through all these different points and areas. So behind all these points are a number of sub points. So is there an uh, environmental strategy? Are there management uh, processes? What's about the, the uh, pre-production? Uh, the production itself and, and then the product and the delivery. And on the, on the social side, is there a strategy how to deal with stakeholders? Are there processes installed? And uh, how do they deal with their different uh, stakeholders? And uh, here you see an ex uh, another example. It's Lindt Schokolade. So they are in the, in the universe here. That's, that's one, one example. Uh, out of, out of uh, 3,000 different stocks we are following, uh, approximately 1,000 are in our investable universe, which means two-thirds are sorted out. So what does it mean in performance? We heard in such number of informations about that here and there. So what you hardly can see here, this is the Eurostox 300. It's an index with 300 European stocks, and they produced in this survey two baskets, one with the 50 most sustainable and the 50 least sustainable stocks. The best sustainable are the green ones, uh, the worst, the red ones. Interestingly here, uh, in 07, before the crisis, they were all, both, both groups were better than the total index. And then you see now the sustainable basket started to perform better. Um, what you can say for the, for the past is there is no proof that sustainable investments perform better than non-sustainable till today. What is proven is that sustainable investments have the same performance but less risk 
which is important for a number of investors. And now in the recent past, we see an outperformance in favor of sustainable investments. So it's, it's going to start and this will move the industry in the right direction. And this brings together this 40 trillion I mentioned before. Uh, they not only are committed to invest in sustainable investments, they also pick the better performing stocks by looking after sustainability of their investments. And uh, this brings investors who don't care about sustainability to the table as well, for they go for good performance. So I think that is, that is a key point, uh, and uh, we have uh, seen the start of a mega trend to sustainable investment, and this will support to save the planet, and it will support uh, to think existing publicly listed companies more in environmental, social, green tech terms. So, in the, in the United States, you have an overperformance, uh, but it's still too young to be solid. Normally, you need 10 years, but uh, we are on the right track. You see here an outperformance over the past three years, sustainable US equities plus 3.2% per annum, whereby the rest was minus 8 and uh, on the five years uh, scale, it looks nice also. We do the same with bonds, by the way, where we have on the horizontal uh, part, we look about the resources that are available, ecological capital, climate change, human tangible and intangible capital, and the asset liability situation. We benchmark this with the, with the global average. On the vertical uh, scale here, we uh, judge how efficiently these resources are used by a country. And uh, you see here Sweden is uh, very investable in our metrics here, although they have over 40% nuclear energy. Uh, here's an uh, excerpt of this uh, analysis. This, by the way, uh, brought us into the situation that we didn't uh, have investments in Portugal bonds, in, in Ireland bonds, and uh, in, in Greece. For they were, under these conditions, and how they, how they deal, uh, economic structure, how they deal with their, uh, with their public affairs, uh, didn't, didn't uh, made it through our filter. So again, on the bond side, uh, you see, uh, and that's no surprise, that the outperformance of our sustainable bond fund uh, versus the, the average bond funds that we had, it ends uh, in 010. I can tell you it, it was a strong outperformance in the past 12 months as well. Does sustainability criteria in the credit analysis add value um, to the credit rating, to the financial rating uh, and to the default rate? And uh, the answer is pretty, pretty simple. Uh, you have the traditional criteria. Uh, if you add the economic uh, sustainability criteria and the environmental and social criteria, of course, you have uh, things here like eco-efficiency, energy efficiency. Uh, this is on the way to, to uh, become uh, actively used in banks as well. This might lead uh, to the situation that sustainable companies asking for credit uh, will have to pay lower margins than non-sustainable uh, companies. So this will have positive impact on sustainability in the industry as well. And therefore, it's pretty simple. The answer is yes, yes, yes. Um, so, banks themselves. Um, as I mentioned, it doesn't make sense to, to point to all these companies where they are sustainable and where they are not. Two uh, topics I would like to, to uh, cover here. You all read this week uh, this letter swap from Deutsche Bank where they lost for the, uh, in front of the Bundesgerichtshof trial. This was a product that was sold to clients in 2005. I'm pretty sure that the people who sold it and received a bonus for that are not in place any longer. Uh, so this is just a small, th that is just a small advantage that banks has to align the bonus system <coughs> combined with the malus system to the sustainable success of the business. 
So that's a general question, but as uh, banks normally pay also in absolute terms uh, uh, big bonuses, it's very important uh, to set the right incentives here. Banks are starting to do that, but today, it, in my perception, there is more written than done. Uh, so there is still something to do. Mm -hmm.